It was back in the spring of 2020. It was clear to us that Biden would be kind of a hologram candidate, conveniently helped by COVID and the D.C. press corps. And the angle told you what the real dynamic would be if Biden actually won the presidency. He's just going to be a figurehead president. Americans won't be voting for a man who can articulate a serious policy agenda, let alone defend it. They'll be voting for the party machine's geriatric puppet. Now, if you didn't believe me then, well, you should now. Now, it's a kind of a cynical, cruel hoax that Democrats are playing on America, because from day one, Joe Biden has been president in name only. Our enemies know it, and our allies, like the Israeli president in July, they're cringing. And we brought Israelis and Palestinians together at a political level, and they are and, uh, and, at the, uh, and, and Akwa and the whole Shram. Oh, we need a translation to buy a vowel something. Now, people often ask me, who's really in charge at the White House, Laura? Is it Obama, Goldman Sachs, the Pentagon, big tech, the donors? I always say, who knows? But it ain't this guy. Nearly 13,500,000 jobs just since you got me sworn in in, in January of 2020. Our Secretary of the, of the, of the Defense, Austin, uh, Secretary Austin, Secretary McDonough, the Army, the Secretary of the Army, Warmoth, Chairman Milley, and uh, Senator Black, where's Senator? Uh, Senator Blackburn. I thought it was Senator Blah for a moment. So aren't the Democrats embarrassed? Why do they stick with this guy? Because he's wrecked everything he's touched. Migrants from his open border, they're overrunning our cities. And inflation, it's a nightmare for working families. Most Americans are a $400 unexpected expense away from bankruptcy. Is that a selling point for Bidenomics, by the way? What a great vice president she is. No wonder Biden's numbers are horrible. Check out the most recent Gallup poll, only 37% somewhat or strongly approve of his handling of the economy. But we have to remember, Biden, the figurehead, he's a perfect president for the globalist Democrats. Why is that? Because he'll never give the establishment any pushback, not against the open border, not against keeping wages low, not against high energy prices, certainly not against their Ukraine policy, and not against the trans insanity. And that's just how they like him, compliant. But the voters, at least on some of this stuff, they don't agree. A new poll shows that 73 percent of all voters, including two-thirds of the Democrats, believe that Biden's too old for another term. Two-thirds of Democrats. Yet what's amazing is the party that claims to be the great guardians of democracy is itself run by a dictatorship of the elites. Even NBC News is admitting that the Democratic elites who hold high office raise the money and pound the campaign message that they're all in when it comes to President Joe Biden's reelection. In other words, what Democrat voters think or what they want is not relevant to the party establishment. They readily concede that they hear doubts about whether Biden is up to the job. Their response? Get over it. Wait, get over it? That's how they treat their own voters. No wonder the entire country is such a mess. There's zero hesitation about running over their base. If that means, in the end, that we have higher energy costs, that we have an open border, that we have endless deficit spending. Those things, by the way, are not accidents. Those are the actual policies. Keep the standard of living low. Control the people. But the problem is their policies of lowering everyone's standard of living war in Ukraine, the attacks on fossil fuels, they're actually hurting the voters that they desperately need to turn out to vote. As the New York Times was forced to acknowledge today, noting the marked deterioration in Mr. Biden's support among registered non-white voters compared to 2020, it's startling. But again, the people pulling Biden's uh, levers seem to be ob oblivious about this. For them, it's full steam ahead. It's Biden or bust. But there's at least one Democrat in office who is not afraid to speak the truth. And he's from Minnesota, Congressman Dean Phillips. 
My call is for the president to pass the torch. Uh, I, I think that would be in the country's best interest and certainly Democrats. I'm worried about the five or six swing states, uh, the battlegrounds that are the most consequential. I've called for some of the moderate governors, people representing those very states, to consider entering as alternatives. Now, Phillips himself considered a run for about five minutes, but then he saw what was coming down the track at him if he did so. But let's face it, all of them are scared to take on the party establishment. Look at what they've already done to their once celebrated liberals. I think it's mad for the left uh, to vote for Cornell West when fascism is at the door. And I think there's something very wrong with Bobby Kennedy Jr. This is a very dangerous guy with a very storied name that is casting a dark shadow. I don't consider Marion Williamson to be much of a threat. I think the best way to handle her is not to address her at all. Mm, how convenient, the party of free debate. And what's perhaps the most pathetic development this entire long weekend at Biden's is how the media have become nothing more than establishment apparatchiks, pummeling the guy with growing minority support, Trump, who actually takes on his party's old guard, and then propping up the man protected by the plutocrats who can't be trusted to find his way off a stage. Some people may be disappointed with Joe Biden, but they'll find him more acceptable than Donald Trump. And that Donald Trump has a ceiling beyond which he cannot grow, whereas Biden at least has the potential of bringing people back home to him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Peter Baker, he's once a really respected reporter at the New York Times. Does he not read the polls about minority voters abandoning the Democrat Party? Now, the fact is, so-called journalists love the Democrat dictatorship themselves that's actually keeping Biden right where he is. And they like it for the same reason, the same reason they love mail-in ballots, ballot harvesting, proposals for online voting even, and the lockdowns. Because they don't really trust the voters, not even their own. We, the voters, have to destroy the Republican Party in order to save it. This is a, a chaotic, um, uh, in many ways authoritarian, um, incoherent kind of, of agglomeration uh, that's not really an organized political party, that doesn't really have a, a coherent philosophy or governing program, uh, except tear it down. Gene. Tear what down? A, a vibrant economy? Immigration enforcement? Our energy independence? Our history? Nope. That's what the forces behind Biden did and are still doing. That's the fallout from a figurehead presidency. And it's all according to plan, whether you like it or not. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.